Hi, this is Roger Green, host of the Surfing the National Tsunami podcast. Today and tomorrow, we were offering five conversations from episode 25. Our same-day coverage of the nice guidance on use of FibroScan to detect advanced fibrosis and cirrhosis outside specialist and secondary care settings. I start this conversation with a metaphor suggesting that as the FibroScan initiative takes shape, different stakeholders and communities might start out in significant directions, hopping away almost as if like rabbits. Vanessa Hebditch believes it best that earlier diagnosis should lead to primary care treating early-stage patients. And the people with advanced NASH have access to the same kinds of weight management services offered to people with type 2 diabetes. Louise Campbell suggests that the regions should rethink their funding to make it, as she puts it, bottom up instead of top down, and discusses other steps that will be necessary to equalize delivery of quality scanning care throughout the U.S. Louise also mentions the importance of NHS's recently announced investment in community scanning centers over the next two years in making all this work. The conversation winds down with Vanessa talking about work the British Liver Trust has done to assess different regions of abilities to analyze and act on abnormal tests and, more recently, conversations with integrated care boards on this topic. She goes on to discuss some of the challenges with producing change within NHS. As I noted at one point during the podcast, Jeff Lazarus reported back in 2021 that the UK scored higher than any other country in its preparation for the NASH pandemic, although it scored only 50 points on a 100-point scale. The joint NICE guidance and NHS funding initiative have the potential to boost that score significantly and start to build a demonstration model for other countries. Done right. It's an exciting prospect, if a challenging one. So just sit back, listen, enjoy, learn, visualize what this could be. And when you're done, join the conversation in our LinkedIn discussion group. So the the starting gun has been fired and all the different rabbits are hopping away from the starting line. And I use rabbits determinedly because human runners all tend to run in the same direction, trying to run more or less at the same pace, if you call it a race. Rabbits don't do that. So uh, tell me, Vanessa, and and then Louise, and then back to Will, some of the directions in which different rabbits are going to hop away from the starting line, or do you think they're all going to head in the same direction? Is it really more like a race of runners? Vanessa Hebditch. Well, it'd be nice if we all knew what direction we wanted to take. What, what, What I think is important, though, is as we start to diagnose knows people at an earlier point, there will have to be a paradigm shift where general practice does take more responsibility for treating people with early stage disease. So one of the things that we're calling for is that patients with advanced NAFLD need access to weight management services. And that should be in line with the type of interventions that are currently offered to people with type 2 diabetes. So, you know, we need to have that sort of social prescribing type um, options for people to say actually and I think if if GPs had that sort of ability to do that they'd be more inclined to find it because they'd feel yes I can do something about this and I can give my patient this intervention. William Elizawi. And if if I can just jump in go back to what Louise said if we also know that this is a driver for behaviour change then the nihilism around the social prescribing can be changed as well. Louise Campbell. Yeah exactly with the rabbits going in different directions I said it last week I said we're all also constrained in some respects the way we think within healthcare. Now, this is a program to deliver. They changed the title from the one that we were reviewing, which was in primary and community care. They suddenly changed the title for the publication, which was outside secondary and specialist care. But ultimately, it's for delivery in primary and non-specialist locations. So district general hospitals who do not have access to fibre scan, lots of other areas that do not have it, more remote locations. I would like to see see as rethink the funding. It should not be top down. It should be bottom up because that's where we're putting the change. So the data should be done from the bottom rather than let's go to specialist centers to go out. Let's go and do it properly. We've put it in to primary and secondary care locations. Let's get the team and create an expert division there who can look at how we can implement what they're asking for here, but with the constraints and the controls to ensure quality. I am a CQC regulated independent provider because I do not now work under a label of a trust. Now, every single fibre scan department in an NHS trust should have been listed to the CQC. So this is a regulated process that can be assessed for quality, quality, quality in the way that the CQC regulate any other area of healthcare. So we can have that protection. We fought long and hard to get regulated and we are the only country as far as I'm aware that regulate this activity. So there is a risk, but it is also a protection.
protection for us and a quality metric for patients and also healthcare professionals to be able to put this in in the right way. All hospitals will have a procedure, a document that was probably written by the senior nurse with the consultant team as to how to put it and they're going to implement it in their department. That's slightly different than how you're going to implement it externally and how you're going to measure the metrics of the people doing these scans. That was something we were very wary about and it is about the quality. It's maintaining the use of that equipment. But also, not all equipment is equal. Over a third of machines in this country are probably out of date. They don't have the capability. They don't have modern interfaces. So we're not talking about, and some of those are being used in trials. We do not have an equative fibre scan service throughout the UK that we can say each machine used in each trial is exactly the same as a different one. So William is exactly right. We need to focus in now on the detail. If we get this right, this is a massive step forward globally for the biggest non-communicable disease as defined by the WHO in people with obesity. Now, I'm very aware that there's going to be with Vanessa and the BLT team tomorrow, a debate on obesity and NAFLD in the Houses of Parliament. Those are two of the biggest NCDs in the globe. The UK, whether we, we strongly dish it sometimes, but we are taking a lead and stepping up for NASH and every other liver disease by enabling this forward thinking and the 2.3 billion that's been announced by the government's health side to try and get liver diagnostics and awareness in. We do need to congratulate ourselves and our country and the hard work that people have put in to do that for patient advocacy around the world. So Louise, that was a fantastic transition to where I wanted to go next, which is the 2.3 billion that the NHS is putting in. Vanessa and I talked about this for a couple of minutes in the lead up to the meeting. So Vanessa, I'm going to turn to you. Take a couple of minutes and talk about how in your mind those pieces fit together since that's those are the things you've been working uh, so intimately on for a long period of time. So from our point of view, in 2020, we undertook a survey of all of the local primary care commissioning bodies within the UK. And we asked some very simple questions. Did they have a pathway for interpreting abnormal liver blood tests? Did they have a pathway that included an assessment for fibrosis? Did they have anything in place to proactively case find any individuals at high risk? Um, And there was a few other questions as well. And we published the results of that survey in the British Journal of General Practice. What we've since been doing is we've been talking to lots and lots of integrated care boards, which are these bodies for those people outside the UK who are responsible for that local commissioning. And what I hope about today's announcement, because what we hear generally, I'd say nearly all of the conversations are pretty positive. But as we all know, there are barriers to achieving change within the NHS. It can be very difficult to achieve change. And I think what I'm hoping today's announcement will do, together with the announcement that fibre scans will be available in community diagnostic centres, will enable some of those bodies to, where there isn't a pathway in place to develop a pathway and give them that ability to do that by using those, you know, the document that's been announced today and the fact that if necessary, they can use the community diagnostic centre to refer in those patients. And I totally get we need to be measuring everything, but we need to have something in place for the early detection of liver disease is better than nothing. When we did the survey last time, only 26% of the UK had an effective commissioned pathway using that criteria that I just mentioned. And now back to Roger. We hope you've enjoyed this recording. If you have any questions or comments about the content of this conversation or the entire episode, please put them in the review section of the page from which you downloaded the conversation or send an email to questions at surfingnash.com. Next week, we continue our Easel Congress previews. Until then, stay safe, surf on, and we'll see you on the podcast. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.